Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial I'm going to show you a really neat fly that was created by Chuck Fremsky. Stay tuned. Let me give you a sneak peek of the Chuck Nymph. You're going to notice I'm going to be tying this with some black leather bug skin and we'll be talking a lot about that during the video. This is going to be tied on a jig hook. We've got some blue ribbing in there, some black and blue dubbing, some partridge legs and a disco bead. You put all this stuff together and it definitely looks like a meal for some trout. So let me get a clean hook in here and we're going to tie this pattern up. I want to point out that on the previous screen I listed the materials, but those are really just suggested materials. The bug skin is the main feature of this fly, and we'll talk about that in the discussion portion of the video, but all the other materials can really be substituted with others. So don't be afraid to get creative with this one. You can look at it as something that's very imitative of aquatic life in your waters, or you can look at it as an attractor pattern and you can tie it accordingly. So again, just have some fun with this one. Well, let's get tying. And in my Stonfo Transformer vise, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. It's their J100. It's a jig hook. I'm tying it today in a size 12, though I'll tie this one anywhere between sizes 8 the whole way down to a size 14. I have a tungsten slotted bead on it right now. It's silver in color. It's a three and a half millimeter or one eighth. Uh, it's one of those disco beads. It looks like a miniature disco ball, and I really love that look on this fly. We're going to be using some ADOT uni thread. And we're going to tie back to about where the barb would be on this hook, though it's barbless. And at that point, we're going to immediately tie in our ribbing. Our ribbing in this case is going to be some ultra wire. The size is brassy and the color is blue. And I really like this color. You're going to see why I chose it here in a second. We'll just get that lashed onto the hook and go back. And whenever we go back, we're actually going to place just one or two wraps behind that wire. And we'll come back to that here in a second. All right, next, we're not going to worry about the tail just yet. We're going to jump to our dubbing. In this case, again, you can use whatever dubbing you'd like. I'm going to be using uh, this Hemingway's Peacock dubbing. This is something that I get from frostyfly.com. I've highlighted this product in my videos before. What I really like about it is you have so many color choices. The one that I have pulled for this fly right now, it's going to be black and it has this blue flash in it. Again, that's why I'm going to kind of let it complement that wire or vice versa. So I'm going to pull a healthy chunk of this black and blue dubbing out. We're going to create a pretty significant dubbing noodle. Though I want to make sure it's a little bit um, fuller, closer to me, because we do want to taper this slightly. Just got a little bit of saliva to that. Now, if you remember me saying we we're going to have this wire up a little bit further, and that's because whenever I was talking to Chuck about this pattern, what he really suggested for this fly and for lots of others, he likes the notion of having a couple wraps of dubbing or whatever your body material is behind the wire and then continuing it in front of that ribbing. Whenever we were talking about why, he, he was mentioning how if you look at it right now, there, this does not come out of the very back of the body. It's kind of almost a smoother transition. And I thought about this ribbing and, and this type of ribbing and other types of body materials on nymphs. And sometimes whenever you have those, this piece of ribbing coming out behind the body material, then you start ribbing the fly or counter ribbing it. It will just kind of gunk up that body material at times. So I thought that was a really great little suggestion from Chuck there. And it's something I'm going to start applying to some of my other patterns. So kind of keep that in mind as you're tying other patterns with ribbing. Now, as I get closer to the, the bead, I'm just going to wrap back a little bit just to help taper this fly, just a hair. I really do want it looking more like a carrot near the head. When we get close, you can see I'm just going to start pulling this dubbing away. I have a healthy clump of it right there. And I could pull that, but because of that flash, it's connected. So I'm just going to trim it, get a couple extra wraps of my thread. And you can see I've left, it doesn't look like a significant gap there, but there's quite a little bit of space between the bead and my body. 
We want to make sure we leave that we leave room for this bug skin. Well, next we have a couple different options. We can add our legs right now, or we can wait until after we've added our tail and our bug skin. And I'm, I'm actually going to wait until afterwards. So what I'm going to do right now is just put a, a quick whip finish on here, just a couple, just to kind of lock everything in place. And I'm going to remove the fly from the, the vise and turn it upside down. Now when I turn it upside down, I'm going to add a piece of this bug skin. So here is the bug skin. It's basically a piece of really thin leather. And we'll talk a little bit more about how Chuck is able to get it to this size. What's great about this is that it's very resilient because it's a lot thinner than an average piece of leather. It won't soak up as much water, so it won't be as heavy. Now, if you think of it, it is going to be heavy, so it's going to help this fly sink. So keep that in mind. It is going to really add some weight to the fly once it gets wet. But it's a very resilient material. And if you look, I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but there's a hole in it right now. I've actually taken my bodkin, I've poked a hole in it ahead of time so that whenever I place it onto my hook, it's going to go on much easier. I don't have to kind of wiggle it and try to get everything lined up perfectly. Instead, I'm able to just place it there, place the, the hook through that. And I have it going on just like that. Now I've pre-cut this. I have it coming to a smaller point, not an exact point. But I want to make it so the shiny side of this bug skin is up. Once I have everything kind of where I want it, i place this back in my vise and lock it in there. Now at this point, we're going to be tying this bug skin down. Now I can, make sure this light's on it, I can honestly just pull it like this, tie it down with my thread, and then counter rivet, and it can be fine at that point. But whenever I was talking to Chuck about this fly, and we were talking about this bug skin, he was mentioning how he really likes to have a little bit of contact cement on the underside of it to really help secure it to the fly. So I have a bottle of this is DAP contact cement. I'm just going to take my bodkin, just put a little bit of the contact cement onto my bodkin, and just touch the underside of this. Basically just enough so it will kind of lock all that stuff in place. So once I, ha once I have some in there, I'm then just going to kind of keep this tight. I'm going to bring my thread up. See if I can move everything out of the way here. I'm just going to put a couple wraps to lock it down and nothing more. Now, now I'm going to return back to my wire and the first couple turns are going to be the most critical ones because I want to make sure as I'm wrapping this wire, and it doesn't matter if I'm, I'm counter wrapping it or not, you'll notice I'm kind of going back and forth to see which way is going to be the best to start. I can really pull down on this and it's really going to kind of pinch into the leather. And as I make each wrap, I just want to make sure that the sides of that leather are really pulling down, mainly on my side of the, the video right now. Once I get it to my tie off point, I'll just lock the wire in place. We can helicopter it away. And now we're left with our leather. Now before I cut that off and do anything else, I want to just do a quick peek around the fly, make sure it's looking the way I want it to. By putting a lot of pressure on it, sometimes it, that leather will turn just a hair. So I want to just make sure it's still straight. Now at this point we have some options. Uh, we can cut the leather as close to the bead as possible and that's the way I'm going to do it. Sometimes Chuck actually likes to cut the leather a little bit higher up put a little more contact cement and then have it almost look like a hood over the back of the bead. So it's kind of your choice as to which way you're going to do it. But I like to just get a really firm grip on this leather, pull it really tight. I have a pair of material scissors and I like to trim it as close as possible. Now it looks like you just want to go over and start covering it, but I'm not going to cover it yet. Next I'm going to add some legs. For the legs, again the sky is the limit. These are feathers that are found on the wings of a Hungarian partridge, so they're a little bit darker than the, the regular partridge feather that everyone's kind of used to seeing, but I love the dark mottled look on these feathers. So I'm just going to grab a pinch of, from some of them, from the bottom portion. I put a clump on one side, 
Got a few too many in there. Quite a bit of, quite a few feathers. So let's get a few of those taken out of there. All right, that's a little better. Hold those in place. And we'll do the same on my side. If you notice, I put just a couple wraps and then I was able to adjust them. I left them a little long and I was able to pull them to the desired length. Okay, once I have everything locked in the way I want it, I'm next gonna kind of pinch those back and now I'm gonna apply all of my wraps to kind of build up everything and to get kind of that clean look that we expect near the head of the fly. Once I have that, I can go to a whip finish and then finalize everything. I'm gonna add a little bit of some Sally Hansen hard as nails directly to my thread. The second whip finish. And now we have our completed chuck nymph. Now because I tied this on a jig hook, it is gonna be running upside down. So think about it like that. So if we look at it, in this case, it will not be looking like this when it's in the water. Instead, it's going to be riding more like that in the water. So this is a really pretty fly. We got a significant tail that's gonna, gonna soak up a lot of water, help to weigh it down. When we couple that with this tungsten bead at the front, you can tell this is just gonna dive down into the water. As I previously mentioned, don't be afraid to really play around with the combination of the color bead, the legs, the um, wire, and that body material. In this case, I just really like the pairing of that blue wire with the peacock dubbing from frostyfly.com. I thought those two just looked really well together. And when I placed them on this hook with that silver bead, I think it really just gives a great look to this pattern. Now let me show you a few of the other combinations I've been playing around with. This one has a little bit of a different color bug skin. I was using the black leather bug skin on the first one. This has more of a model look to it. It's a brown model look. I have some partridge flank. And then an olive brown peacock dubbing. Again, it came out of that, that dubbing pack. And I, I really think this is just another really neat looking pattern, especially with that modeled look of the bug skin. Here is an olive one. It's olive bug skin. And I paired that with more of a light olive body. Just gold ribbing, again, partridge flank and a black bead. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit more about this in the discussion portion of the video. We have more of a peacock color dubbing against more partridge, but the bug skin is a gold bug skin. So kind of think about this gold color and think about some other of those, those bright, those chartreuse types, those hot pinks. Think about that stuff in terms of a bug skin and, and kind of imagine what you could really do to play around with this stuff. So with that said, I'll put the original that I tied for the portion for this portion of the video up. This is the Chuck Nymph. Uh, this is the black and blue, I guess we'll call it. Uh, just a really great looking pattern. Let me turn the lights off just in case that changes the look of this fly a little bit. And now that we've uh, kind of completed the tying portion of this video, let me change the camera angle and we'll talk a little bit more about this fly. 
Before we talk a little bit more about the Chuck Nymph, let's talk about this pattern's creator, Mr. Chuck Frimsky. While most people know that Chuck is the creator of not only this fly, but the largest fly fishing show in the world. It's called the Fly Fishing Show. These shows take place all around the United States. They are just incredible shows that bring in presentations regarding fly fishing, fly tying. They have all these great vendors. There's just all kinds of incredible stuff going on. He's slowly turning over the reins to those shows to his son, but he still operates the largest fly tying show in the world. It's called the International Fly Tying Symposium. It's in New Jersey and it's always held the weekend before Thanksgiving. I'm really pleased to announce that I'll be tying there this year. That's going to be the fall of 2016. I hope to see many of you there. But now the one thing that most people don't know about Chuck is that he was in the leather industry for approximately 44 years. So he's got a lot of knowledge in that area. So you couple that with his fly tying prowess and you put those two together and Chuck started to create these really incredible flies using this bug skin material. Now if you've tied with leather before you probably know it's very thick and it's a little tough to manage. Well, being that Chuck was in the industry, he realized that there's this machine out there that will actually thin the leather to make it a lot more manageable and applicable to fly tying. And definitely is that product just perfect right now. So it's called Bug Skin and it has all these different uses because it's nice and thin. Right now he's selling it in around 8 to 10 colors. Uh, you can use it for hot spots, I tie beetles with it, nymphs, check nymphs, stone flies. You can use it for entire bait fish imitations. Really the sky is the limit for this material. Now as of right now there's only one supplier that I know of. It's called Badger Creek. Their website is eflytire.com. I'm not sure if they list it on their website but you can contact their owner directly and then order the product through them. The one thing that I'm going to push all of you towards, I'm not sure if they're carrying any fluorescent colors but Chuck had some that he sent me to kind of sample. So if you're interested in trying this stuff out for hot spots definitely send them some emails, just barrage them to try to get some of that material out there because it could really be some fun stuff. It's really easy to wrap on. So again, just play around with it and let me know what you think. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about Chuck away from all that fly fishing show and international fly tying symposium. He's also listed as a tire through the Rainey's Flies website. He has a lot of flies that he's created himself. He's just an, an excellent fly tire and I encourage you to check that out. I'll list uh, links to all the websites that I just mentioned in the description of this video if you want to go and, and check, out, check out any of that information. Well now let's kind of jump forward to the Chuck Nymph. As you saw in the video, just an easy fly to tie and I really love that application of the bug skin. It makes this fly one that you can fish in both rivers and in still water. So play around with it and figure out exactly how you want to use this pattern and what it's going to be representing because it can look like a nymph, it can look like a bait fish and I'm betting there's some other things out there that you can kind of imagine that a fish would take it for. Don't be afraid to kind of play around with the body color and the body material as well. Whenever I asked Chuck what he preferred to, to use for the dubbing, he honestly said whatever I have lying on my bench because it's just one of those flies you can really just mix and match with. So really the sky's the limit and you can also kind of counteract if you're going with a really dark bug skin, maybe go with a really light dubbing and kind of look for that contrasting color and play around with it and see what you can, you can come up with. Well, my other really kind of favorite part of this fly is its name. Chuck was thinking that there's such a big craze right now for the European nymphing, for Czech nymphing, for these jig flies and he thought it'd be really comical if somebody went into a fly shop asking for a Chuck nymph and having that fly shop owner say, you know, you mean the Czech nymph, right? And to have that person say, no, no, I mean the Chuck nymph. So if you want to get a little kick out of um, the name, by all means try it in your local fly shop. They may not know about this fly yet because this is definitely a newcomer on the block. Well with all that said, I really hope that, that you enjoyed watching this presentation of the Chuck nymph. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments section or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you'd like to watch more fly tying and fly fishing tutorials from me, you can check out my website which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram account under those headings, that trout and feather heading, that you can check out and I post various fly tying and fly fishing pictures and articles, all kinds of fun stuff and it's a great way for us to interact. 
If you have any other ideas to kind of use this bug skin for, by all means, leave them down below in the comments section because I know once I started playing with this material, there were all kinds of things that I really thought, man, I can do with this and I can try this with it and I can use it on this type of a pattern. But I'd love to hear some of the thoughts that you're immediately thinking after seeing me play around with it in this video. So by all means, leave those down below in the comments section. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope everything's going great for all of you out there and I'll see you next time.